Ras Lila takes place on the side of Govardhan Hill. So that time, Lord Muni was talking with Brinda Devi. We'll go see Brinda Kund on 22nd, where Brinda Devi stays. But Brinda Devi was wandering by here, and Lord Muni was discussing how he had desire to see that Ras Lila of Lord Krishna. But we know no male person is allowed. So Narad Muni was lamenting how he can go on the side of Govardhan Hill. This Pasantaras is going on. So Brindadevi took him over to Kusum Sarovar. And in the southwest corner of Kusum Sarovar, she dunked him in the Kun, in the Sarovar. And he came out in female form as Naradi. Like I've got one god sister in America named Narati who sings very beautiful songs. In fact, she's also sung this Brindade Vastakam, also very nicely. So he came out as Narati. So then he went there to that place on the side of Govardhan Hill, just not far from here, Chandas Rover, and he was able to get darshan of Raslila. Because Brindadevi had told him, because previously, he had been to Ravel. We'll go there on Diwali day to Ravel, birthplace of Radharani. There he got darshan of Radharani. And he had seen Krishna. But Brindadevi explained to them, until you see Radha and Krishna together with Radharani tucked up into the left arm of Sri Krishna, you have not got darshan of Krishna. We don't like to see separate. One time devotee who was Prabhupada's servant, he put the picture of Radharani on Prabhupada's desk. And Prabhupada said, if you bring Krishna, just to see the photo of Radharani means to see ordinary girl. Like that. You bring the photo of Krishna. So when you buy your photos there at the Mahaprasad stall, you buy the both photos, not just the Radharani photo. So he told, until you see, tucked up into the left, sh left arm of Lord Krishna, the Srimati Radharani and Krishna together, then you have not got that. So there, Nard Muni, he was able to give real darshan of Radha and Krishna at this Chandra Shrove. And he was just very much in the Then he came back here, and then Brindadevi took him to the northeast corner of Kusum Shrover, dunked him in, and from female form he got to male form. Maybe we should bring Mother Parvati here and dip her there, and she'll be happy. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, Narvati, he stayed here. And the, the Pujari here, or the, actually the Mahant here, his name is Dinamandu Sharan. Are we Dinamandu Sharan? Hey, Pujari ji. Just like in. Uh, our Gaudiya Sampradaya, when we give Diksha, then you get the name Das. Rajin Bandhu Das. But in Nibarka Sampradaya, when they give initiation, then you get the name Sharan. Huh? Just like Krishna says, Savardharmam Prik Yaja, Mahamikam Sharanam Raja. So they get the name Sharan, who's taken shelter of. Same thing, Das or Sharan, same thing. Here, so Mahant here, his name is Dinabandu Sharan. Very nice, very wonderful, very premi uh, sadhu, Dinabandu Sharan. So he's, now he told me, I have not been able to verify anywhere, but it seems to make sense. But this is the place where Nard Muni took Kayadu. Anybody remember who's Kayadu? Oh, we have some scholars here. Wife of Hiranya Kashipu. Because we remember that the demigods, while he was out performing his penis and austerities, they attacked the palace and they grabbed poor Mother Kayadu, who was pregnant. And they were taking her away. And Narada Muni came and said, Stop, what are you doing? He said, No, no, we're not going to do any harm to her, but she's carrying a snake within her womb. As soon as this child is born, her demon than his father, so we'll just finish him. And Narada said, Hey, Indra. Hey, Surdev, the child within their womb, he 
he's a great devotee. You cannot possibly kill him, even if you try. You let her come with me. I will take her to my ashram. So we know Narad Muni, he cannot stay any place. So obviously the only place he could have ashram is here on the side of Govardhan Hill. So I have it on the authority of Dina Bandusharan that this is the place where Narad Muni instructed Prahlad Maharaj was in the womb. Narmuni was trying 
trying to speed it. He's like that. So, Takaji, he told to Srimati Radhika that, look, you never listen to this fellow, otherwise he will make fight between us and our whole relationship will be finished. And Radhika said, Are, what could ever come between us? What are you talking? Nothing could ever come between us. So Takaji, he just shrugged his shoulders. He said, well, anyway, I told you, I'm warning you. So one day, Krishna was sitting there in Lalitakun and Nard Muni was passing by. And he came down and began to offer so many beautiful prayers and songs and glorification of Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna was very pleased. He said, Hey Nard, whatever benediction you like, you take. He said, No, no, I'm simply happy to chant your glories. I have no need of any benediction. I'm just simply happy engaged in your service. No, no, Nard, whatever you like, you take, you take. Any benediction you take. He said, No, no, I'm just very happy in your service. It is my only payment is just to sing your holy name and sing your glories. I'm very happy in that. That's all. No, 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 whatever benediction, anything you like, you take. Well, one little desire is there in my heart, you know. This Lalitikund is such a beautiful place. And here there's a beautiful pula, swing is there. If sometime I could see you and Lalita sitting on the swing, <coughs> then I would be very happy. It's the only desire I have. <laughs> Takaji said, Bas, that's all? He said, no, that's only this little request I have. Tatastu, Soviet. So one day, uh, all, all the gopis and Srinanda Nanda, they were sitting there in Lalitakund, waiting for Radharani to come. Of course, she was busy doing all her makeup and shringar and all these things. You know, the ladies are always late with these things. You know. So, she was busy. So that time, Nard Muni appeared in the sky, passing by, and Lord remembered that I had given this benediction. So he sat down in a swing and he said, Hey, Lalite, come, sit and swing with me. Now, Lalita, she doesn't even in dream ever think of enjoying with Krishna. She's only busy making arrangements. This is our desire also. We only want, we want to make arrangements for Radha and Krishna to meet. This is our, we just want to be the Das, 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 Anu, Das, Thousand Days. Not making arrangements. So she doesn't even in dream think of enjoying directly with Krishna. She immediately, she refused. And Dagarji was just laughing like, no, no, come, come, sister. Then he called all of you, bring her here. Huh? So because he was laughing and everyone was laughing, so they got into this laughing mood, so then all the sakis laughing and laughing, they just grabbed Lalita, Lalita and they stuck her there on the side of Krishna and began to swing. So everyone was enjoying very nicely. Nard Muni, he got his darshan. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Oh, ho, ho. he was just diving and swimming in ocean of bliss. Ah, ha. So then he left that place and he went on his way singing Lalita Krishna, Lalita Krishna, Lalita Krishna, Lalita Krishna. <laughs> you know, Nandagaram is just not far from Barsana. So he went by Barsana, right by the room where Radharani was doing her makeup and singer. Lalita Krishna, Lalita Krishna, Lalita Krishna, Lalita Krishna. And Radharani said, Are Muniraj? Every day you are taking Takarji's name and my name today. Why are you singing like that? And when he said, Oh, you're sitting here so complacently. Huh? You think that Lalita is your best friend, huh? Maybe in front of you she's your best friend. You don't know what goes on behind you when you're not there. Huh? <laughs> you should go there to Lalita Kund and see what's going on just now. And Radharani, she got shocked. Hari? Immediately she ran down the path to Nandagam and came to that Lalita Kund. And she came there on the edge of the Kund. She saw Lalita and Krishna were swinging very sweetly and all the gopis were singing and laughing. And she became very angry. She made angry mudra. You know angry mudra? Hands on the hips and toes tapping. <laughs> <laughs> so then immediately Nanda Nanda, he saw, uh-oh. <laughs> He ran there and fell at the feet of Sri Mati 
he said, no, get away, don't touch me. You're a rascal, our relationship is finished. You're just a complete rascal, you don't come near me. And Lalita, she got shocked, because she, Lalita, she's always making arrangements that sometimes she, when Radharani becomes too angry, then somehow she calms her down, sometimes when Krishna is trying to mistreat her. So 
many wonderful varieties of pastimes. And in Vrindavan, the highest place is Govardhan. As we were hearing the other day, Haridas of Arjuna, he is the bestest devotee of Krishna. And so many wonderful pastimes take place there. And in Govardhan, the highest place is Sri Radhakund. And beyond that, there isn't any other higher place. We are now in the most sacred place of the entire universe. Sri Radhakund. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu also came on Braj Prikama 500 years ago, he was, first of all, he was in Bhulavan, where our buddy had to pass through there yesterday. And he was observing the beauty of the forest of Braj and seeing the cows and deers. And he was going along the path and he was chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Completely lost in trance of ecstasy. Just nearby here, some villager told the devotees who were walking with him that this is Aritagram. Original name was Aristagram. Named after Aristasur. As soon as Mahaprabhu heard the name Aritagram, he immediately left his trance. And he began to ask everyone, where is Radhakun and Chamakun? Where is Radhakun and Chamakun? But they were lost. Nobody could tell him. Now why hearing Aristogram, which is named after Aristasur, did Mahaprabhu ask about Radhakun and Chamakun? First of all, you remember Aristasur, he came in the form of? Bull. So this is a very sweet Madhurya place. So what does Aristasur have to do with Radhakun and Chamakun? I'll tell you. One day, Sri Nandanandan, he just got all dressed and decorated for doing Ras. When he heard the news that this Aristasur was coming, and he was just tearing up the dust, the land of Braj with his hooves, and smashing the houses with his horns, and his tail was slashing the clouds, and creating huge disturbance in Braj. So he was all dressed up for Ras. So he rolled up his sleeves, tightened his belt, and got ready to fight. So that Arista sword charged him. He grabbed him by the horn, swung him around, and threw him. And again, that Arista sword regaining his consciousness, he got up. And he again charged, and Krishna just swirled him around again and smashed him on the ground and stomped on him like a sponge, wet sponge. Bam. Bam. And he passed stool and urine and passed to the kingdom of Yamaraj. So Krishna killed that Aristasura. So then he called Srimati Radhika and all the gopis, now we can do Ras. And Srimati Radhika said, Hare, you have killed a bull, that is a big pop. You know pop. What? All the little boys, they like to drink soda pop. No. Pop means sin. That is a big pop, sin. We can't be associated with such a person as you. You're contaminated with this sin. And then another the said, Hare Sakya. Hey, Radhe, that wasn't a bull, that was a demon in the form, form of a bull. But he was a demon and I killed him. And Srimati Radhika said, well, we heard from Purnamasi that one time Indra, he killed a Brahmin. He was a demon, but he was in the form of a Brahmin and he got reaction. This, what do you say, this lady with, what do you call that disease of the lungs? Pneumonia came, coughing blood. <laughs> 
Veronica, she consulted with all her suckies. Then she said, you will have to take bath in all the sacred places of the universe. Then she then 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 said, Ari, Ari Sakia, hey Ari, that will take a long time if I have to go throughout the whole universe, how I can be away from you so long? I will call all the sacred places here on one place and take my bath here. And Radha Rani Saki said, oh, no, 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 don't try to tease us. We don't believe in your magic. Don't try to fool us. And with that, Nanda Nanda went on the other side here. And with his right foot, he stomped a big hole in the ground. And he played on his flute and called, and all the sacred places of the universe came in personalized form and bowed before him. And he told, he said, any service, Maharaj? He said, yes. You chant your, you give your introduction, you chant your mantra, and you pour your water in my kund. So they all came forward in front of the gopis. Nanda was with his eyes. He was saying, "See, see." I they all came. They gave their introduction. They poured their chanted their mantra and poured their water in his kund. So so many sacred rivers came and places came. So that took. It was almost very late at night, almost midnight. By the time they finished pouring all their water, then 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 he took his bath. And then he told Srimati Radhika, Hey Radhe, now you all come in the water, we'll enjoy Jal Grida, water pastimes. And Srimati Radhika said, Ari, this water is contaminated with your sin. How we can come in this water? We will make our own kund. So Srimati Radhika came on this side and she broke her golden bangle. Golden bangle we call Kankan. So in the middle year, many years ago, they cleaned, about 15, 12 years ago, they cleaned. We saw in the middle, there's a little kankan kund. We might get to see a picture of that later in Pickapa, let's see. So she broke her kankan and she began to dig. All the sakis broke their kankans. They began to dig and dig and dig and dig. They found one depression where Mr. Sewer had dug his hoof into the ground. There was a hole already there. So they began to dig in that depression. And they made little kund. And when it was finished, and then, 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 then came, he saw, and he said, Adi Sakya, hey Radhe, your kund is very beautiful, but there's no water in it. So Radharani said, we're going to bring water from Manasi Ganga. Some of us, we saw other day Manasi Ganga. Anyway, Manasi Ganga is just near town of Govardhan. So we're going to bring water from Manasi Ganga. And Gopis got big silver and golden water pots and they made big line and they were going to bring millions and millions of pots. Now, no, 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 he doesn't like to see even bead of perspiration come on Srimati Radharani's brow. So she, he made some signal to all those personified holy places. They became one person. And that one person, he went there and he began to offer so many beautiful prayers to Srimati Radhika. And Srimati Radhika, she said, all right, what do you want? And he said, we thought that the perfection of life was to be associated with the lotus feet of Sri Krishna. But now, seeing your wonderful divine qualities, we can understand perfection of life is to be associated with your lotus feet. Because first of all, do you think that Nanda Nanda got purified when he took bath in the water of all those sacred rivers? Do you think so? No. Do you think he got purified when he took bath? No. Somebody no. says yes? No. no. Yes? Somebody says yes? All right. You're wrong. <laughs> all the sacred places became purified because Nanda Nanda took his bath in them. This is an excuse to, to purify all the sacred places. But now they are saying, we now know the real perfection of life is to be associated with the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. So Radhika, she sent little Katak sidelong glance at Nanda Nanda, because she knew that this is all his plan. So she said, and what is your desire? He said, we want to come in your kund also. So she smiled at Sri Nanda Nanda, and they made a hole. You see, right where that white chatri is, you can see there's a hole underneath the parkway there. So the waters of Radhakun and Shamakun mixed together. And Sri Nanda Nanda, and he told to Srimati Radhika, Hey Radhi, your kund is very, very beautiful. And I will always come to take my bath in your kund. And Srimati Radhika said, Hey Kanna, your kund is also 
Filipinas, en Samaya Mandir, y Nia Sujin es Janambi Devi, en Samaya Mandir.
every day at noon, Srimati Radhika and all the Sakis, they come here on this particular ghat and take their bath. Because the noon time meeting place, Yoga Beat, is a special meeting place, secret meeting place. So Madhya Kaleen, the noon time Yoga Beat, is here at Radha Kund. So here at this place, the gopis come and take their bath in anticipation of meeting with Sham Sundar here in this beautiful, most sacred place of Radha Kund. This also has name of Pancha Pandav Ghat. Because you'll see this Shamakund, he's very funny shape. He's not square like we saw Radhakund, very nice. This funny shape. One thing is, he's shaped from upside just like right foot. Here's Krishna stomped his right foot here. Other reason is, when Das Goswami, we'll hear in a minute about how he excavated the kunds, there were some trees in the way of making it nice and straight. So he marked those trees in the morning, they were going to cut those trees. So night time he got dream. Maharaj Yudhisthira came, he said, Goswamiji, myself, Bhima, Nakula, Sahadev, Arjun, we're all here on the banks of Shamakun doing our bhajan in the form of trees. So you please don't cut any tree on the bank of Shamakun. In the morning you will recognize it. So in the morning Das Goswami came, he recognized all the trees. There was Yudhisthira, Arjun, Bhima, Nakul, Sahade. So he told people, don't cut any tree, but just make... Because our Takarji, he's crooked. Our Shamsundra, he's tree banga, you know, he's crooked. You know why he's crooked? You have seen hook for catching fish, muchly. He's got crooked. When fish will bite, then he can't get out. So same way, our Shamsundra, he's crooked. He goes in your heart, and you can't get him out. <laughs> so you better be careful. By going on these pickles, he'll get screwed in there very deep and you will never get him out again. So his kund also, he's also, he's crooked, his kund is crooked, everything about him is crooked. So last of the trees, he was, he is also entered into upper Kathila. You can see here one of the last of the Pandava trees he's left. Now this, they tell me this was Bhima. Anyway, this tree here, this is a pilu tree. This is pilu tree here. In the springtime, if you come at Gorpurnim time, little burgundy colored fruits come that are very sweet. But if you bite on them, you'll break open the seed and burn your tongue like chicken. But this particular pilu tree, he spoke to Biswanath Chakravarti Pad. Because as we go up, first place we'll see is the Bhajan Kutir of Srila Biswanath Chakravarti. Who's famous for one song we sing every morning? What is that? Somebody said samsara prayers, but we don't want to sing. Samsara means this material existence, so we don't want to sing prayers to material existence. This is Gurvastika, not samsara prayers. This is Gurvastika, eight prayers glorifying Guru. So don't say samsara prayers. He was doing his bhajan here and this pilu tree spoke to him and told him all the different pastimes that happened here in Radha Kund and Shama. So we'll see his place and next to that is the bhajan kutir of Raghunath Das Goswami. Now we'll hear all these nice stories of Raghunath Das. So first you take some water on your head from this Shama Kund. Now we're sitting on the banks of this Manasa Pavangat. In a little while Radharani and all the Sakis are coming so we have to get out of here quickly. So you take some water. side of this pillow tree and we'll go up here to the courtyard and ask for some of
estás pasando? Pues pasa mal. Vayan con tu sabor. Vas a dejar el picture. Dale, dale. So 
Sanatana Goswami became very angry. He came down. Hey, what kind of bhajan are you doing? You're chanting here, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, please give me service. Please give me service. And you nonsense. You're just taking service for Krishna. You don't pay any attention. Tiger and tigeress is coming. And Krishna and Thakurji came. He stood there keeping guard for you. What kind of bhajan is this? So Sanatana Raghunath, he was very humbled by this. He said, no, no, I'll be more careful. With so another day, that was in the hot summer. This is autumn season. You're all complaining, oh, it's too hot, it's too hot. It's nothing. It goes up to, if you know, 50 degrees in centigrade or 127 in Fahrenheit, like that. That time, Raghunath is sitting there in the hot noonday sun. They say only mad dog and Englishman, he go in the noonday sun in India. <laughs> and he's sitting there in the noonday sun and he's chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, he's not paying any attention. Like that, this hot sun is coming on his head. Sanatana Goswami came, he looked, he saw, you see in the picture who's there? Srimati Radhika, she's holding her end of her sari over his head, like this. So Sanatana Goswami, she's holding up her sari like this, you can see her trolley is all wet, she's just standing there sweating and sweating in the hot sun, and shading like that. So then she saw Sanatana Goswami standing there, then Radharani, she smiled very sweetly and disappeared. And Sanatana Goswami came running, You nonsense! What kind of bhajan are you doing? You're sitting here, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Radha Krishna, please give me service. You're in the noonday sun, you don't pay any attention. Srimati Radharani is coming and standing, you just see, because she was so much sweating, all the dirt became wet. And Raghunath, he saw Radharani's beautiful lotus footprints are there in the mud behind him. His mud that is formed from her sweat. So he immediately, he felt so very bad until Sanatana Goswami said, Look, if you can't take care of yourself properly, you make a kutir, you do your bhajan inside a kutir. So then they started this bhajan kutir system. People well, they're just staying in the trees, and this is the original bhajan kutir. See the Raghunath Dasgur. Now you can see all the four stories are in this big painting. One time, Raghunath, and he was very deep in his meditation. One time, he became very ill. He had big stomach aches. And all the Goswamis, they are very worried. Oh, Raghunath Das is very sick. You know, he's got fever and his big stomach ache is there. He's crying out in pain. So they brought one Ayurvedic doctor. Ayurvedic doctor came and he's feeling. Is this person is suffering from eating too much sweet rice? <laughs> Everyone knows Das Goswami. He takes a little palm of chach, you know, buttermilk. After they turn the butter, turn the yogurt. Here in Braj, we turn the butter, the yo yogurt, the um, butter from. Yogurt. Whatever is left over, that is called chaj. You're just taking a little bit and drinking. Little leaf plate. Like we served you out in samosa today, that side. He's taking that much. So when he got so much, you guys said he got skin again. And Raghunath, he became a little shy. And he flushed. 